you are watching the fan club. You're watching the fan club. And you're watching the fan club. Do you know what time it is? And you know what time it is. It's time for the fan club. Let's go. Hey! I can't do this on my own. Cause you know things ain't always sweet. When you out here in these streets. But my morpher when it morph, I made a fake one. Walking bread. Oh, oh, Milo. 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 
Oh, you're the oh. moderator. You're the moderator. Wow. Moderator's getting it. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. So, you know, uh, just Karen and Steve, were you aware of the show and how big it was when, when you all came aboard and you all auditioned? I heard of it, but I never watched it because I was in high school. So I was like graduating high school and I was flying to college. I was I wasn't too cool. I was like just like I gotta go to college. Yeah. And um, but they told me about an audition, and I mean we showed up and there were thousands of people in line, and I was like, oh shoot, I need to watch this. Like this. Is, I mean it was like the number one kids show in the world. So I literally was probably the only person who had never heard of it. Um, but I quickly found out, really quick, how big it was and how successful it was, and I mean, I was blown away. I was very familiar with the show. <laughs> I was watching it daily because when I was back then, I was a martial arts instructor and I was teaching kids martial arts. That was my job. Yeah. And so I used to, anything martial arts on TV or movies, I watched all the time. I was obsessed with all of that. So I was very familiar with Power Rangers, and I used to watch Power Rangers and go, <laughs> yeah, was I never get an opportunity or anything like that, and just randomly, out of the blue, I heard about some audition they were holding in, so that's why I went to the audition, but I, don't know, but I was familiar with the show, so when we did our second audition, yeah, I knew that. We, we put everybody guys, guys, when we say it's more time, you have to put your hand on it. Yeah, he told us, he taught us how to do it, we were like, that was that, they were impressed by that, because all the other people didn't know, all the other people that we were quickly interested. became a group, <laughs> And it, comedy and everything is so funny. 
Yeah, and they would do it over and over again, and every take would be different, and it would just yeah. work. It'd be funnier and funnier and funnier. So it's yeah. very cool it's to watch. A lot of it. improvisation with these guys yeah. as well. And the director. Well, we were, we were desperate to do anything because they made us wait around like ten hours before all you primary color people <laughs> were finished standing in a line and turning to observe the viewing globe in unison, like the you know, like dance moves. You were kind of like yeah. when, when you come home, your dog's been like penned up all day long. That's exactly right. <laughs> 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 you smell the shit? Why are you so stupid? <laughs> oh, yeah. I told you, do it on the pee pad. On the pee pad. <laughs> See? This is all the time. It's not even an act, it's like natural. Bulk and skull branded pee pads. <laughs> I see a big business. That is good. It's a business. You can sell those at Growing business. Oh, God, it's growing. It's growing. I'll, I'll buy you one of those shelves that I have. And you can put them on there. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. I'll arrange your adult diapers. Yes. Those in five different colors. Okay. It's a little close to home now for us. Yeah. <laughs> Socks so are. dry. No socks. Uh, no socks, Steve. Yeah, I, I don't believe in socks anymore. <laughs> Any other incontinence questions? <laughs> yeah. well, as you mentioned about the, the physical copy, uh, Jason Paul, I, so was that something that you all did in your auditions? Like, can you tell us about your audition process? Like? Sure. Um, I, I showed up to my audition very early in the, before the series or even the promo pilot started, and I... I knew there was four or five other fat guys that were showing up for this role, and I decided to go 20 minutes early before my audition time. And they, one of them, one of the producers was like, "Oh, oh, you're here for the. Oh, well, you're here a little early. Well, why don't you just come on in and we'll get going?" And that was it. Like, mm. basically, I, I kind of just showed up early, which is always good advice. Yeah. If yeah. you're not early, you're late. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. <laughs> and so uh, and I, I got to step in for one of the writers slash producers, Tony Oliver who was the voice of Rick Hunter in uh, Robotech, my favorite cartoon. And so, uh, and, and then it was basically looking back at my own theatrical experience. So yes, a lot of fight experience, a lot of sword play experience, doing Shakespearean shows as an equity actor in Los Angeles. And, uh, and Narvi's similar background. So when we, the physical comedy was just part of our DNA walking into the jobs and then we just dovetailed together. Yeah, at one point, at one point during my, my audition, um, they had asked if I could do because my audition, I don't know about yours, but mine was in that boardroom up in the in the studio mm -hmm. in in uh, uh, Culver City, and so it was a small boardroom with a big table in the middle, and so they had me run dialogue, and they're like, we don't like the dialogue that much, can you improvise? And I did, but then after being there for about ten minutes, and they really had me improvise a lot of skeezy stuff, like, hey, why don't you get up on Ellen? Like, hey, Ellen, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, well, you might remember the characters were total sexual harassers. Oh, my God. So they asked me to sexually harass the producer. I'm like, oh, that's a twist. You're doing this producer sexually harass. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, they, things that have not aged well since the 90s. No, that is one of them. So then they asked me if I could do physical comedy. I'm like, that's insulting. I'm an actor. I'm out of here. And so I go to leave the boardroom and I smack the door on my head and I flipped over their desk. Papers everywhere. You're hired. There's You're hired. hired. You, you destroy all the other auditioners' uh, right. information, and they only and then they only remember us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Jim. Jim, go on your dining show. It's okay. <laughs> You couldn't forget. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're not gonna go there. Oh. <laughs> uh, so we did, uh, again, there's a. If you have questions, uh, feel free to start lining up. As, yeah, yeah, start, yeah. Yeah. as, 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 as folks are starting to line up, I'm gonna ask you my favorite question here before we as uh, yes, line up. Um, and that is while doing these shows, while doing conventions. Has there been, and Steve, uh, I don't know, I've seen this question before, uh, has there been either in the green room, at a table next to you, across the way, has there been another celebrity guest 
at one of these shows that you saw and you kind of just fanboyed out about it. Either, either you, you couldn't speak or maybe you spoke too much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, no. I, I, I don't think there's anyone that ever like spoke too much or whatever. I don't think I've turned anybody off that I've met, but I definitely fan a little bit. Um, you know, one of the big ones for me was I was a big fan of the Karate Kid growing up. So to me, you know, Billy Zappa and Ralph Macchio back in the day, like that for me was like this, that was the movie that got me started in martial arts. You know, so that was incredible. And then I got to meet really cool people like Burt Reynolds and like oh, yeah, Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Bethesda. Yeah, and of course Stan Lee, you know, and um, you know, recently I got to meet Tom Willing. Uh, well, actually, I, put I saw this and he many, totally fangirls. Oh, my God. <laughs> there, were many, there were many times that I had been at, at Comic Con with Tom Willing, but never got the courage or the opportunity right. to, 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 nice to meet him. But um, so I was sitting at my my booth, uh, which was like the range stop, because we were promoting range stop at one of these shows, and I think. Yeah, yeah. Over here in Indiana. And all of a sudden, this, this figure just walks right past my table <laughs> and starts walking around the, the shelves and looking at Power Rangers stuff. And I'm like, what's my table like that? Oh my God, it's Tom Welling. I was like, hey, where are you? And I was like, bro, anything you want. Anything you want. He bought all the toys. No <laughs> Literally, he bought like, you know, $200 worth of the toys for his kids. And I'm like, you can have it all. And, uh, and I was like, can you have a picture, please? And he was like, yeah, sure. So anyway, but I think he was like more excited, like, you know, that we approached this uh, the answer to this question for Vulcan Skull uh, as follows: What famous actors hate Vulcan Skull? <laughs> <laughs> no one. We're a little loud. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers does not like Vulcan Skull. <laughs> uh, Deanna Troy from Star Trek. Definitely does oh not like so Vulcan Skull. Oh no, we almost got into a fist fight at practice. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, in Lexington, we get a, we get a couch that they get from the thrift store that they're about to throw away, and then we destroy it. Yeah. It's kind of a gap, right? We rip this couch to shreds, and she thought that we were just vandalizing stuff. <laughs> and she's uh, as, as sweet as she sounds as, as you know, um, a Councilor Troy on Star Trek, and as she's received British pronunciation, she went all cocky on us. Now, what the are you doing there? What you for your old bad on that? My son was couch here. You can't really get that, that. But like, you got all street and stuff. Now, we weren't really, you're supposed to be a mind reader. It's a bit, babe. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I think, Paul Freeman got us out of that one because she plays with Paul Freeman. Yeah. And she's on a weird buddy with Paul Freeman. And, now and Paul was like, oh, it's all right. But then it is. But the next time I saw her, it was all like kisses and smooches, and she was very sweet. Yeah. She's dead to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Paul Freeman is Ivan News, by the way. Yes. He's also Bellock. He's also the Jack Ranger yeah. stop this year, yeah. next month uh, in Atlanta. If you guys can make it, that would be great. Plug. 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 Shameless, shameless. Okay, question. Go for it. Yes. So, what story would you guys like to do like, in live action from the comments? Such as the Lord Dragon story on Ooh. Ooh, yeah. There's a lot of like the Boom Studio comedy storylines that are like, really, really good, you know, like the whole Shattered Grizzly yeah. universe, Necessary Evil, all of those. So, yeah. it would be great. I mean, there's there's endless material that they could do. I just want to do the part where Aisha gets a boyfriend, finally. <laughs> 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 oh, I do not have a boyfriend. I finally got a boyfriend in the yeah. comic. Rocky's was always unlucky. Yeah. Finally. You know, Rocky, Rocky, you still haven't got a girlfriend? No, I never did. I even like even a blind girl didn't want to go out. With you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a blind girl didn't want to go out with you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the girls that I would try to hit on were like, no. No, no thanks. <laughs> well, I'll say this. This is what we do like about the comics in general. Is that uh, th look, there's a big debate whether or not they should make uh, Power Rangers darker, like Shattered Grid, or you know, how to age the characters. And I like the comic books in general because they don't necessarily have to go darker to give character development to all the characters. Yeah. And the writers that do that have put a lot of thought into how to update those characters and give all of the characters the kind of character development we never got in the show. Yeah. So yeah, just about anything from the comics is pretty Yeah, cool. like when Bulk and Skull become Power Rangers, right? The orange and the purple Rangers. Yeah, and, finally! And you know Skull's, Skull's parrot sword, its only power is to fly away when attacked. <laughs> 
that's, that's true. And I'm a pig, which is shocking, really. So my original question was going to be, uh, how much of your own personalities do you put into your characters? But as you can see, that's already been answered. Uh, so all of it. So my question is, is going to be, um, when, there's a lot of physical comedy that was done. Uh, what was called my favorite was The Bold Witch, where you guys had that gigantic sandwich that just fell apart on you. Um, would you say, is there any sort of, um, any sort of uh, prop comedy, physical comedy that you guys consider your favorites, and of those, are you happy with the way that you have portrayed the characters, Folk, Skull, Rocky, and Aisha? I mean, are you guys happy with the way that you I have no idea what you just said. He's giving me like the rest. <laughs> <laughs> you have been planned for 24 hours. He's like and changing my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I felt pretty. I think I should finally got a boyfriend. I got a boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Like, I don't think they they really had like any you know idea what Rocky's character would be like. One of the fortunate things for me is that Paul Schreier, because I had never done any acting before, I, I was basically thrown into the deep end uh, on the show. I was a martial artist and gymnast. That's what got me on the show. But I knew nothing about lighting, or camera angles, or acting, or you know any of that stuff. So Paul, yes, yeah, that was yeah. evident. Yeah, <laughs> right, it, was evident. it really was. Go back and rewatch those. And be like, you know, around the third year, you began to move your neck. Right. <laughs> but in the beginning, Paulie was my acting coach. He was my acting coach. He was, you know, he really helped me. Uh, you guys did a good job. You guys were thrown into the thick. Yeah, yeah. it really was. I mean, I just had no experience at all. And, and uh, so in the beginning, I think, you know, they kept my lines short. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, uh, and, you know, giving it time to develop. But by the time that Zeal had come around, you know, there was school. More character development for Rocky, but in the beginning, I think they just, you know, oh, put him in class, sleeve the shirts, you know, look like Jason, and we'll just kind of hold that people. They literally put him, put him into, into Austin's costume. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's totally right. right. Did they do the same thing with you? Yeah, they did the same thing. Like, I didn't really get any new clothes. They just kind of hemmed everything. Like, yeah, like, they like, did. My power, because I was shorter than yeah. her, so yeah. it was like my suit had. You know, tweet and the inside. So we wore the same suit. Yeah. I wore big thick socks because her foot was like half size bigger than mine. So we wore same boots, everything. Um, luckily for me though, they they just were like they they were like just you know you're. I was a teenager. I was 18. So they were like just do what you're doing and just be bubbly. And so I just went for it, you know. And I I did yeah, so. Also had some I had some acting experience, but it was like for me this was like my first time being like a series regular. So I just was like. I, I just went for it. I was like, okay, either I'm going to get it right or I'll get it wrong. They'll tell me. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so I just kept going. And luckily, they, they were they actually told me at one point, don't watch the show because we don't want you to be like Trini. We want Aisha to be completely different. And so I was like, I, I could never be. I mean, she was so graceful. And I was more like sassy. And so I was glad that they were encouraging me to, to keep that going. So. Awesome. Nice. Whoa. Hey. So my question is for all four of you, uh, Steve and Karen, I know that you guys uh, took over the spirit of the Tyrannosaurus and a series of Tiger when you took over. However, and then uh, Bulk and Skull, you guys had the Purple and Orange Rangers. Thinking about it now, if you guys could choose any spirit of dinosaur or creature to have your power to represent, what would it be for all four of you? And it has to be a dinosaur. No, dinosaur or a creature. Or a critter. Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty tough to beat the red dragon and thunders or whatever. That was my absolute favorite. Yeah. So cool. I, I've always said I think uh, Skull should have been a coyote. Like, looking for the stray dog out there that you eat. You know, <laughs> kind of hanging out like in the back of the forest while all the other animals are like, we're going hunting. Oh no, I'm running for freedom. I'm graceful. I'm like, I haven't had a bath in six and a half years. <laughs> I'm pretty good being the pig ranger. I mean, we just might as well embrace it. <laughs> oh, oh uh, I, I like Saber Tooth Tiger. I thought that that was so strong for a woman, you know, and for it to go have a girl do that, I thought it was really cool. Did it look like Saber Tooth Tiger to like Griffin? Griffin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Saber Tooth Tiger, Griffin, Griffin. 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 Although we have often referred to Griffin. 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 Mama Bear, we yeah. We often refer to, to you yeah. as Mama Bear. Well, and I became the bear in the movie. I know, so that's what was like. yeah, no. Mom, yeah, the bear was perfect. I mean, honestly, my family, I'm Pooh Bear to them, so <laughs> it was it was, it was, was perfect. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. I don't like the ape, though. I don't know. You don't like the ape? No. 
which means I didn't get to drive it, I got to see it. And after I paid for it, because I think you came with me to go buy it, right? I, uh -huh. no, I didn't go with you. Oh, that's okay. Uh, somebody else did. Somebody else did. So, the opal guy. Yeah, the opal guy, that's why. Right. Yeah. Uh, you want the car, right? Um, and so when I bought the thing, I got in the car and I couldn't start it. I'm like, dude, I, I saw you guys at the auction running the car. What the hell? One, two, three. Why is there three pedals? Oh, that's a clutch. Where is this? Oh my God, it's a three on the tree. Anyone ever hear of a three on the tree no. transmission? Yeah, a few of you back there. You've only heard about school. it. Old school. Old school. It's where your stick shift is up here. Yeah. I never had driven one in my life, but now I'm driving in a foreign country on the wrong side of the road. This has gotten off topic. <laughs> we need to stay on topic. Power Rangers, not Fords. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize for that. Well, he was Anybody? way off. He was way off the reservation. It was really good, though. I was ribbing it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had a quick question for uh, Jason and Paul uh, pertaining to the Turbo movie. Mm -hmm. um, how long did it take to film the scenes on Diva Talks' ship in the water? How long were you guys in the water? Oh, uh, that'd be two days. That was it? Yeah, two yeah. days for us. Yeah. yeah. Well, originally we were filming it off the coast, so we actually had a dive team and we went off, because there's uh, some islands off the coast of California called the Channel Islands, and we had sailed out there, and we were there, and the night, the, the morning of, we got really bad weather, and they couldn't film. So technically four days if you don't count those two. That's true. And then, and then the dive master, Al Giddings, who's a famous underwater naturalist, uh, didn't like the fact that I had smuggled rum on board the ship. <laughs> and he said we were out and they sent us back to the shore. Uh, what? I was like, I didn't even drink it yet! <laughs> Settle down, Jack Sparrow. Yeah. <laughs> Why is all the rum gone? <laughs> Why? Hello. Good question. Man. Hello. I really don't have much of a question, more of a request, but before. I want to say that you guys are great. I've always loved your characters on the show. And for Jason and Paul, you guys are probably the most evolved characters on the show. Because first you start off as bullies. Then you were semi-bullies, but yet investigators trying to find out who the Power Rangers were. And then eventually you tried to become cops just to get girls. I don't know if I'm his face. And Monkeys. Um, yeah, then your shows. And then you're having a hard time finding a job. You're looking for aliens, space, and then... It's basically the American experience, right? Yeah. Bully, can't find a job, so look for aliens. Yeah. Look, look for a purpose in another universe. Yeah, but then you two started a revolution in the end. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Again, the American experience, right? I am, I am Spartacus. Well, anyway, that's what I have to say, but now the request. I know for Steve and Karen, I'm sure you get this a lot, but I gotta ask, and since I know you two have been uh, empowering, especially, can I get a little bit more open time? <laughs> it's more open time! Tyrannosaurus! Saber Tooth Tiger! Pizza! Hot dog! Oh, you are. Something like a Bacalodon! <laughs> Something like a pecan, but done. Good question. Good job. Awesome. All right. Hello. Hey guys. Uh, this question is for Steve and Karen. Well, Karen, you answered my question when we chatted on Galveston. But uh, Steve, if you had the opportunity to team up with any group of Rangers between Turbo and Ninja Steel, who would you choose and why? Well, I did team up with Ninja Steel, so well, when we can all get put that one to bed. <laughs> So, Mighty Morphin, you know, obviously the most iconic to me. You know, it's the one that most everybody recognizes, you know, when it comes to that. So, I'm really proud to be part of that. But Zeal was actually my favorite season to work on for what we talked about before because, you know, they gave my character a lot more character, you know, and I feel like the storylines were better. But I was not a big fan necessarily of the Zords, <laughs> Zeal, and 
you know, um, the, the suits were okay, but yeah. They were different. It was different. Yeah, the, the suits looked like a like well, a like a, like a traffic light around. fell off the pole and is laying yeah. on the ground. <laughs> I always thought they looked like those little you know things where the kids put the shapes in the different holes. Yeah. <laughs> Meet the wrong holes. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. shapes of one, two, three, four, and five. That's why it was zero one, zero two, zero three. One was the whole circle. Two right. was the two visors. The three was the triangle. Oh. Four was the rectangle, and five was the star. Oh. See, so he's Whoa. smart too. <laughs> he's smart. I don't even know he what you just said. Shapes. <laughs> the shapes are the helmet. He passed his shapes in school. I <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah. oh, right. Good question, bro. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. Kind of like feeling like Steve was a Tom Holland for a moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Are you a fan of right been, now? I've been since the beginning for 30 years. Um, but uh, this is more for Eugene and Fargus. Um, I, just, I love it. <laughs> what was it like working with Goldar and Rito? Was there a lot of takes and were you guys constantly trying to like outdo each other? Well, <laughs> so you know that we got those suits from the Japanese show, right? Yeah. Every year on Power Rangers there would be a shipment, it was shipment day, when giant wooden crates would show up from Japan and we would open it and you never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> and what you usually got was the funk of a thousand Japanese kids. <laughs> but these, it was yeah. funk a talent. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, Danny Style Cup and, uh, and David Wall, yeah. who played Rito and Goldar, yeah. kind of interchangeably. We're also the, 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 and, the, yeah, yeah. the Black Ranger and, and the Blue Ranger as yeah. well in the suit. And, and then David uh, doubled uh, the, the Black Ranger and the Blue Ranger in the movie as well. Yeah. yeah. So those poor guys had to live in that soup. Mm. Because once, once you did say live in that soup, yeah. Yeah. soup, it's, it's soupy. I mean, okay. I mean, the fact is there's no way to get the human out of those suits after they've been used for nine, ten months. And so that was the primary issue was that it's not more funny. They were good guys though. They had questions. They sold her on. I've never heard that phrase, you can't get the human out of the suit. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's latex, man. Latex, just, it just sucks everything in. All right, last question. Up, oh, hey guys. Um, so my question is, working with a legendary actor such as Paul Freeman on the Mighty Morphin movie, what are some of the things that you took out of that experience working with such an experienced actor when you guys were still fairly new to the game? I learned not to ask your brother what he has done since Indiana Jones. <laughs> his answer was, I lived a life! <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys probably got to work with him a little bit yeah, more than yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that probably was a question more for you guys. I mean, we just got to work with him at, on basically that one scene for the most part. And I feel like he was really generous, you know. So but, generous. Yeah, I feel like he could tell that we especially at least half of the crew, um, you know, had not had a lot of experience with, with that. He was, he was, he was very generous. He's just so kind. Like, yeah. he, that was one thing I, I mean, for him to be so accomplished, and be, but he was so cool, so down. He was like, always wants to talk. He like, literally, he, to this day, he sends me emails. He's like, just checking on you. I just want to hope, I hope that you're okay. Just a nice man. So it's like, that for me was a great example of someone who's really accomplished and really done it and worked with, I mean, the biggest of the big, and he's still so down to earth. That's he, the way you should be. He's a lo lovely man. Yeah. So, uh, Paul's first job after the Power Rangers movie is he got hired by American Repertory Theater in Boston, Massachusetts to play Cross the Row in Twelfth Night uh, wow. for a three week run. Cross the Row in Twelfth yeah. Night? Oh, sorry, in uh, sorry, the yeah. Tempest. The Tempest. Thank you. And so uh, I was talking to him <laughs> as, as, as right. no shit, right? right so as we were finishing shooting the movie, he said, uh, Paul, would you like to come with me to Boston and be my docent? And I was like, I know what that is, but okay. Yeah. And what it meant was carry the luggage, roll the joints, and cut the pate. And so I was his assistant for three weeks as he played Prospero in Tempest, and it was amazing. Fantastic mentor. Wow, I never knew that. I never knew that. I never knew that. Well, I didn't want to tell anybody I was just shacking up with Paul for three weeks. <laughs> I love it. It was funny when his wife and daughter came for Christmas, she was like, you can go now. <laughs> and that's going to be our time. One more time. Give it up for the Thank cast. you, guys. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
shout out to the gold ranger members out there the arctic operator roderick ham papillon purple salima ramirez danny nascimento stephen heffelman chaos draco thomas franco anime king nick lewis cairns miguel ortiz and sean schiffer thank you guys so much for your support and if you want a video shout out like this one sign up to be a gold ranger member today i just want to shout out all of the fans out there for taking the time out of their day to watch this content thank you from the bottom of my heart if you can please like hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and hit that share button and if you guys want to be a member click that join button right now we have a blue ranger membership that gets you into the exclusive fan chat discord then we have the gold ranger membership it gets you into the fan chat but you also get a video shout out at the end of every video i want to thank you guys again if you can sign up to be a member we will see you next time peace hi hi right. we're bulk and skull we, we have are been requested, requested by, by the, the fan club, club to say, say something funny. Hey!